What's up, Wildcats, and welcome to today's episode of The Changeup. I'm your host, Liam Barrett, and I'm here with relief pitchers Sayun Park and Joshua Singer, who are going to talk a bit about spring sports at WJ. I'll let you guys take it from here. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, thank you, Liam. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm one of the uh, print editors-in-chief of The Pitch. Last year, I was a sports editor, and I'm a junior. Hi guys, I am Sayun Park. I'm also a print editor in chief, and I've covered some sports for the pitch in the past. So I think I like to think I know my way around sports at WJ. So today I have County Sports Zone open, and we are going to go over um, spring sports, um, just doing a little overview of each sport and some of our expectations and predictions. So Josh, do you want to start with baseball? Yeah. So the baseball team has gotten off to a good start, uh, currently undefeated, um, and they're ranked number four in the state by Max Preps in front of a bunch of private schools, and they are the top public school. Yeah, there are huge expectations for baseball coming into this season. Obviously, last year we lost to Whitman in the regional final, but we still have really good players and lots of depth in our team. Like Josh said, we are undefeated, and we are supposed to play Whitman uh, on Thursday, but that game was canceled due to the rain. Um, Baseball's next matchup should come against BCC on Saturday. Um, so it will be it will be interesting to see how baseball performs this season, especially given how strong our region is um, for states. Yeah, especially those Whitman and BCC games. Um, both of those are very good teams. Uh, Walter Johnson lost last year to Whitman in the regional final. Um, and I think that getting a win against them would not only be a huge boost for the record, but also a big uh, morale boost considering uh, the history from last year. Yeah, uh, for baseball, I think it's really region or bust. If they don't make our region, um, which is so, so hard to get out of, it'll really um, be tough. So baseball, biggest expectation this year is to get make it out of our region. Moving on to boys tennis. Um, lots of changes in the boys' tennis team this year. Um, we have a new head coach, Frank Solrot, who used to play uh, Division Three tennis at Middle Georgia State uh, and was a, a graduate a coach at U Indy. So big changes for the boys' varsity tennis team, but pretty rough start with a 0-7 loss to Blair before break. But uh, we are coming back. Our next matchup is Saturday at Rockville High School. Josh, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, um, that 7-0 loss does not look great as a way to start the season, but um, you would probably know what the feel of the team is, right? Yeah. The team is right now, uh, considering you're on the team. Yeah, I am on the tennis team, and I can say what our team this year, we have a lot of depth. We have a lot of freshmen. Um, I think it's the most freshmen we've ever had, um, or very close to it. I think like oh, five of our teams, our members are freshmen. Um, so new talent, and we also have a transfer, Santosh Sundar Jr. So it'll be really interesting to see where we go from here. Our last two seasons, we went six and six and five and seven. So we really want to break over 500. And, um, at, and during states, we also have a mixed doubles uh, state title defending last from last year. So we want to defend that title and see how far we can get in regionals and states. Um, same thing for tennis girls varsity. Um, they won 7-0 over Blair on March 21st, um, and they mirror the boys' tennis schedule. Um, they have some really good talent with junior M- Mia Milicevic and Sky, uh, senior Sky Carter. Um, they also have a lot of freshman depth. I think the biggest thing for the girls' team uh, would also be working with the boys' team for that mixed doubles title. We really want to see them defend that championship that Brady McBride and Sky Carter won last year. Next sport. Yeah, on to um, girls lacrosse. Girls lacrosse team came out and started with two 10-plus point wins. Um, They're defending their region title, and I would think that uh, they can defend that well. They still have Anna Zucconi and Natalia Kraus. They're two D1 commits, as well as Ginger Fitchberg, who committed to Butler this year. And, I mean, 10-point wins to start the season against Churchill, a region opponent. Uh, it's got to be a big boost for confidence and just continuing the momentum that they built from last year. Yeah, definitely. They made it to the state semifinals last year, if I recall correctly, um, which was a huge uh, run for them. And their next matchup should be on April 8th, which will be Monday against BCC High School, another region opponent. So it will be interesting. They have lost a couple of seniors from last year that were very key in their um, campaign to take them to states. But I think 
just based off the first two results, it looks like the team has recovered well and the team is continuing to uh, compete well, even with the loss of their seniors. Yeah, those games against uh, BCC and Whitman should shape out to be very good indicators for what the playoffs will look like as those are two of the best teams in the region. Moving on to boys volleyball. Uh, boys volleyball last year, county finalists. Uh, I think they, if I recall correctly, they were county finalists two years in a row. And they are now um, dealing with the loss of their two star seniors from last year, Joe Morris and Sebasani. Uh, but they have started the season well this year with a 3-2 win over Poolsville before break and a 3-0 win over Magruder on April 3rd. Josh? Yeah, especially um, just looking at that 3-2 win over Poolsville, they were missing two of their captains for that game. So um, being able to come out with that win, bring it to Magruder, get a sweep through the sets, um, has got to be a big way to start their season. And especially with the loss of Joe and Seba, uh, Seba was one of the top players in the country uh, playing on the national team. Committed to Long Beach State University, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Seba committed to Long Beach State and Joe committed to Belmont Abbey. Both of them are now playing in college. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they recover from that. Um, they also as, have a new head coach this year. Um, head coach Brian Farrell stepped down last year. And I think, they're, do you know who their new head coach is? Yeah, their new head coach is Sarah Williams. Um, I talked to her a couple weeks ago. Uh, she seemed very excited for the season and was looking towards um, bringing more of a volleyball culture to WJ. Um, their next matchup is going to be Monday versus Sherwood High School. Moving on to boys lacrosse, um, boys lacrosse has also had a really good start to their season. 11-5 win over Blair uh, before break, and an 11-9 win over Churchill on Wednesday. Um, Josh, what are your ex expectations for boys lacrosse? Yeah, I mean, that win against Churchill is their first against uh, the Bulldogs in 13 years. Last year, they beat BCC for the first time in about five or six years. So I think the program just keeps building under uh, head coach Bubba Anderson. And... Um, It'll be interesting to see how they play against Whitman and BCC uh, their next two games. And I think that they, you could see them go even further than they did last year to the regional semis. The team has uh, J.R. DeBose, Ryan Gardner, um, Alex Klein, and uh, Noah Diamond leading the way, as well as Jonah Levy. And I think that uh, those five, uh, as the core of the team, can really lead that team to a good su successful season. Very interesting. I will be very looking forward to how lacrosse does this season. And I think our last sport will be softball. Um, softball opened with a tough loss to Sherwood, 2-12, um, just before break. And they were supposed to play Gaithersburg and Churchill, but both of those games have been rained out. Um, but softball last year was a state quarterfinalist and a region champion before losing to Urbana High School 0-18. Um, the biggest thing about softball is they have very, they have good, very good retention from last year with their team, keep, keeping key pieces like uh, starting pitcher Sammy Rosenberg, who's a senior this year. Um, so softball, I think, also has very high expectations this season. But um, it'll be interesting because Sherwood uh, was the toughest opponent on their schedule. They um, Sherwood was down class to 3A this year, so they will not face Sherwood again in the, in the playoffs. So it, coming into playoffs. Softball is just going to have to look at what their opponents are playing like and how their key pieces are doing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they um, rebound from that Sherwood loss. I mean, a 10-run loss to start the season is never really what you go in looking for. But um, with games against Clarksburg and BCC, they should be able to uh, get their season back on track. Also of note um, on that Sherwood game, they, they did have multiple pieces missing, like center fielder Mackenzie Norris and um, outfielder Al Ali Beirube, um, who were gone for break. So coming back after break, uh, their first game should be um, on Saturday versus Clarksburg to see how they do. It'll be very interesting. And the rest of their season, last year they went 12-2 and in the regular season, and they were very, very good. The only losses were to Churchill and Clarksburg. So I think softball also has high expectations this season. I think that rounds it out for sports at WJ. But overall, I would say that our spring sports have some very good expectations for this season. Yeah, I mean, last year was one of their most successful seasons in history. Um, so, I mean, even getting back to that level would be very impressive. 
uh, the bar was set high, and it'll be interesting to see if it keeps going up or gets lower. Okay, next we're going to move on to um, some pro sports. Recently, it was announced that the Caps and um, Wizards would both be staying in D.C. and not moving to Alexandria. Uh, there were some worries considering that, I mean, we're a Maryland-based school. So there were some worries among students that it would be more difficult to get to games and uh, could be more expensive as well being in, in, in Northern Virginia. But um, it looks like they're going to stay in D.C. Yeah, I'm glad they are staying in D.C. Um, the Caps and the Wizards are such a huge part of uh, watching the D.C. culture. And I think moving the teams out to Northern Virginia would detract from that. But really, I think what we learned from this whole ordeal was that um, I think that the owner, Ted Leonsis, I think he was playing a really big gaming chicken here. I think he knew that he wanted to stay in D.C. and was using Northern Virginia as leverage against the D.C. city officials, which I think happens a lot for teams that want public money for their stadiums and want to stay somewhere, go they go find another city or another location to use as leverage for their stadiums. Similar situation in the NHL where the Arizona Coyotes do not have a stadium right now and they've been looking for a stadium for years. They used to play in Phoenix, and now they play in, uh, I think they went to Glendale for a while. The NHL and uh, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman is trying his hardest to keep the team in Arizona. but. Um, for the past two seasons, they've been playing in Mullet Arena, which is the college arena for the Arizona State University, which only has a capacity of around a couple thousand people as compared to the multiple tens of thousands of people for most um, full-size stadiums. So I think um, in all sports, we're looking at teams that are leveraging their situations to try to get the best stadium deals and the best money that they can. And um, I think at the end of the day, the people who are hurt most from that are us, the people who want to go to the games in the cities and who want, to, who want their team to stay their team um, when, when owners are threatening to leave, threatening to move out of the city. Yeah, I mean, also, though, in a couple of places, uh, building a new stadium has brought more, um, like, consumerism and, uh, like, tourism to the city. While we're on the topic of stadiums, what, where do you think the Washington Commanders are going to build their next stadium? So, I'm not really sure about it. I know that they're going to end up getting rid of FedEx Field because... It's basically a certainty at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's been ranked worst stadium basically for the last, like, 10 years. I mean, if you watched games there where sewage pipes have been leaking or the railing fell and a bunch of people fell right next to Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. Um, I mean, it's just kind of falling apart at this point. I think that the best odds, I would say, are probably towards somewhere in Northern Virginia. The hope would be that they would move into D.C. back to right where they used RFK to play Stadium. near RFK. That, sit, that state site has been empty for years now also, so D.C. is probably also looking for a really good solution for the RFK Stadium site. And I know Governor Westmore of Maryland has been working really hard. He, he wants, obviously, the commanders to stay in Maryland. So I think uh, where the commanders go from here is going to be a very hot-button issue across the DMV. Um, obviously, we support Maryland, but it remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, just like Vegas, uh, building an NFL stadium is going to bring in a lot of tourism and consumerism. And I think that um, wherever the stadium ends up, uh, it could benefit or also hurt, depending on how much taxpayer money is used. All right, thank you very much for listening to Say Unionize Yap Session on sports, both at WJ and in the DMV, as well as national community. Um, Josh Singer, Seiyun Park, signing out. As always, please feel free to let me know what you thought about the episode with the review Google form in my Instagram bio, where you can also give suggestions for future episodes. Alternatively, you can DM me on Instagram at the WJ Changeup. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, see ya. Thank you to Seyun Park and Joshua Singer for co-hosting today's episode, and as always, a huge thanks to the WJ Pep Band for composing the introduction song. Additionally, thank you Miss Gelfand for letting us use the Media Center conference room to record.